Welcome to SDH's coverage of everything going on in the USL Championship. First couple of match weeks in the books. We'll go over what happened in the week that was, get you ready for the weekend that will be, and go through all of the news, notes, nuggets, and things left unsaid that have happened in the championship as we get you ready for a match, another match week coming up here in short order. Once again, no dilly, no dally zone, so we'll go straight to the action and what went down in the previous week. Starting all the way back on the 13th of, when, of March on a Wednesday, El Paso, three matches in a week. They end up at home with a 1-1 draw against Monterey Bay and then have to turn around on Saturday and play the first match on Saturday hosting Lou City. They would end up losing that one by the score of 1-0. Loud United put three on the board, beating North Carolina FC 3-1 at Segra. Indy 11 on the road at AutoZone beat Memphis 9-0-1 by the final of 2-1. Then history was made at Burns Stadium on the campus of Bryant University. The Bryant Bulldogs, the host for Rhode Island FC in season number one. Rhode Island had their first home match against New Mexico United. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at the USL Championship and YouTube. History is made in Rhode Island. Rhode Island FC's first ever match in club history is underway against New Mexico. Good switch. And a great first touch as well. Thrown in. Dequa nods it down. Tambakis denies. It's Ibarra curling it around. Headed high into the air, and Tambakis cradles and ignites the restart. Harris is offside. Not by much, but puts an end to that counter opportunity. Flanagan erased. Some space here. Fusan gives chase. Maples, though, steps in, taking it away. The throw from Tambakis. A little errant. Bodies collide. Holstead takes aim. It crushes the left bar. The crowd buzzing. Brito. Huizera. If that ball would have found the rope, you talk about a highlight to begin franchise history for Rhode Island. Ibarra swings it in. Bodies colliding. Tambakis wanted a foul. Turnbull twists it in. Second shot. Hits the bar again. A header goes high. Holstad will be wondering what he has to do to buy a goal. This is a lovely strike. And then it just is inches away as the ball bounces off of the turf. It makes it so difficult. It was a fun team to watch for those years that they played. And you knew it would not take long for those players to get gobbled up. Vegas picked up in November. The very first player in this franchise's history. That's an excellent turn, and it's a great poke. Fusan, flag is down. Fusan, Tampakis again. Rhode Island throwing everything at the net. Tampakis denies. Years, and they have been there to answer every single time. Here's Reyes, sends it over. Harris, too long to decide there. And Ibarra in Vegas step over and push it away. Really should do better from that angle and that position. Micheletto, his corner kick in. Finds Gloucester. Once the right foot trickles it in, Vegas picks it up. Back to the sideline, Rivas, the target. Keeps it in play. Yo, man, Sprints back in. Hits the chest. New Mexico clamoring for a handball. No stoppage there. Seymour takes aim. And Vegas pulls it out of the sky. Leto slings it across. It bounces. The head comes in. Vegas punches, but it goes in. And New Mexico gets the opening goal in this match. 
Talon Maples. Busan does really well to get by Bailey. They'll be lucky to stay out of the referee's book. Mizera fires it all the way across. Turnbull has to bring it out. Yao McGlynn. Turnbull, excellent maneuver here. McGlynn swings it back, throws it in. Dequa, Tambakis cradles comfortably. Holstead steps in, creates an opportunity. Holstead waits. Holstead finds Tambakis, nods one down. Tambakis like a brick wall right now. Rhode Island, will go, they'll go the opposite route, trying to make a substitution to come in and try to go in moment for the first goal in Rhode Island FC history. McGlynn slices it into the box. It is headed. Turnbull won it. Tambakis. Holstead. Here's Fusant whipping it across. Back post. There is the moment to put in a time capsule. Rhode Island on the board. A long wait for the first match in history and a longer wait for the first goal in club history. Mark Doyle, etch your name in Rhode Island lore. We're tied at one. We had to wait four years. Doyle off of the giveaway. Sadie sprints. Sadie cuts it back. Sadie. Tampakis punches away the first. Not done yet. Thrown in. Doyle. Tampakis reaches and tosses away. The whistle blows. And that's how match number one in Rhode Island's history comes to an end. 1-1. Rhode Island had chances to get another goal on the board, but it would end up shared result after 90 plus minutes at FIU football stadium, no longer Ricardo Silva stadium, the Miami FC loses to Sacramento Republic who had to go from one end of the world to the other for this particular match week. Republic won it by the score of one nil orange County SC did the same thing. And they got a big three points on the road at Highmark, shutting out Pittsburgh by the final of two nil. We've had one crossover as one of our matches of the week. So how about another Tampa Bay, San Antonio FC, this one, was a 15-round heavyweight fight. Here's your highlights of this one, courtesy of our friends at the USL Championship and YouTube. Yeah, could, uh, our line at its very best. The carpet looks like World Cup material. 76 degrees, the players love it. The fans are packed. Gonna go in between that center forward and right wing roll to try to create as much havoc as possible. Blake Bonnelly had four assists for the round. He's in the preseason. He has been on fire, and Tampa Bay is on the board here in the fourth minute, courtesy of Cal Jennings. Well, we talked about fluidity up front, but you don't need much fluidity when you can finish like that. A brilliant delivery from Bonnelly at the near post. And boy, does he have... A nose for goal, Carl Jennings. A poacher getting to the front post and just flicking it on. In 2024, came off the assist of Blake Bodily on the corner kick. Tampa Bay attacking once more. Rebounded and put in by the Rowdies. Oh, the flag goes up. Dorty. Jordan Dorty. Just before that end line. Here's Rivera now. Rivera makes his oh. move, cuts it back, shot oh. is on, just over the crossbar, but very creative, crafty stuff by Damian Rivera. One hopper, right in front of the goal, and that's the first big save of Jordan Farr's Tampa Bay Rowdy's career. Underway, half number two. Jennings shoved out of bounds as he puts that one in play. Here's Neon Gaberi attacking. He has got some room to work with. Sends it on the ground. Pablo Cisniega. Went across the goalkeeper, but just safe hands by Cisniega. 
Cal Jennings now slowing the game down. Switches it over to his left. That was an absolute rocket. <laughs> Getting up in the air. I believe that was Artiaga who attempted the bicycle kick. Didn't quite have enough there to square it up. Again, we saw Cal Jennings switching back onto that left foot. Great technique. Good save again by the keeper. Tampa Bay. Fans holding their breath here in the opening minutes. At point blank range. One more from Hilton. Radis continue to knock on the door here. Eventually, you got to think that door is going to open. Younger Berry. Tampa Bay running once more. Cisniega douses the flames. Now he's on guard, though, as Guillen. And now Tainer on top of it. San Antonio playing uphill the entire way. Dangerous ball this time. Look out, it's Hernandez. Rowdy's back in place. Here's the shot. And once again, Jordan Farr saw it coming from his ex-teammates. Live your dream, rep your team, and play as your favorite USL Championship club. E-football is free to play. You can download right now. I can tell you right now, I play e-football, and I use the Tampa Bay Rowdies. They have the gear. Here we go. Neon Gaberi trying to get it in position, and it's scored! Tampa Bay doubles their lead. Manuel Artiaga. It's 2-0. Well, Artiaga is going to get the glory in the right place at the right time. But Nyanga Berry put this on a platter. It's Gura Noguera. About to come on here, and I believe Mohamed Abu, his night, is about to be over. So here's Noguera coming on. So that's why they've... Which stood the test of time. San Antonio trying to get close here, and this one is through. San Antonio is on the scoreboard here in the 83rd minute. Well, so the shutout is for not. They get it by Jordan Farr, just like that off the bench. Nogueta delivers. Well, what a way to make an entrance. Just a strong, powerful run up that right hand side. And the rowdies, you have to see, sort of fell asleep. Nobody really reacted. The Zach came in on a curveball coming his way. Sometimes that's where fatigue late in the match can Absolutely. set in just a little bit. The mind's not thinking. And the mind goes, the legs follow. Yes. We are in extra time here in downtown St. Pete. San Antonio trying to pull level. Ball in the middle of the box and blasted through. San Antonio FC has tied it up in two here in extra time. And it was Carter Manley with the blast. Well, we all talked about Manley and his 1v1 versus Rivera. Look at him showing up at the last minute to get the equalizer. Nothing pretty. Ball played into the mix up. Rowdies do not handle it. Hernandez missed kicks. And there's Manley showing up. Tampa Bay will have to get offensive here. Oh. Taken away. Look out. This is Hernandez. Lasso trying to scramble back. And Forrest Lasso just may have saved the game with Jordan Farr, who has come way off his line. And that's going to do it. 2 2 will be the final. The Rowdies had a 2 0 lead, and it disappeared just like that. What a performance from this guy. Four goals on the board, 2 2 final, shared result, and that seems about right when these two meet up if it's at Al Lang or. If it is in San Antonio, Widener Field in beautiful downtown Colorado Springs had the switchbacks take it on the chin, losing 2 1 to Detroit City. FC Tulsa went to Cashman, put three on the board, beat Vegas Lights by the final of 3 1. Monterey Bay responded with the midweek point by getting three at Cardinal against the defending champs in Phoenix Rising, winning 1 0. Pioneer hosted Oakland Roots and the Charleston Battery in another East West crossover, Roots and Battery. A 1-1 one, one draw. So that sets up your standings. After the first couple of match weeks, once again, a lot of action. And you have uh, some teams who played twice, most who played once. So let's roll through it real quick. 
Loudon's played twice. They got four points there at the top of the East. Detroit City, the Miami FC, Birmingham Legion, Hartford Athletic, Lou City, Indy 11, each have one win on the board, either playing twice or once, and that gets us to the eighth position. Charleston Battery, they have two draws in their first two matches. That would be your playoff bar, but we've got at least another eight months to go. Below it right now, Tampa Bay with one point in one match. Same for Rhode Island FC. North Carolina FC, two matches. They've got a loss and a draw. And the Riverhounds out of the blocks with all the changes in the offseason. 0 for 2 out of the blocks, minus 3 in goal difference. And they are last in the East. In the West, two matches have been played by most of the teams in the West. Orange County, Sacramento, Oakland Roots, Monterey Bay, New Mexico United, all with two matches and four points. FC Tulsa. And at Memphis 901, each have three points. FC Tulsa has played one less match. That puts them in sixth. Memphis 901 in seventh. San Antonio, two points. They are in eighth, below the playoff bar. El Paso, three matches played already. Once again, three matches in a week. One point to show for it. And then no wins on the board for Phoenix, Vegas, or switchback. So that gets us into uh, everything that's going on in USL Championship from a news and notes point of view. Loose City and Indy 11, keep an eye on that one. April 6th, that one is going to be the USL Championship on CBS. For the Louisville-Indianapolis Proximity uh, Association Football Contest, LIPA FC, that's going to be on CBS, Loose City and Indy 11 on April the 6th. You end up with all the other activity going on. And one of the more interesting aspects of the news that came across the desk in the last week, Roots are going to play next season at Oakland Coliseum. They are not going to play at Pioneer. They're trying to build their modular facility. But next season, both the Roots and the Soul, they're going to play at at the uh, Coliseum. So very, very cool to hear that come across the uh, the wires this past week. Wilson Harris has hit 50 matches for uh, Lou City, youngest player to reach 50 regular season goals in the USL Championship uh, last week, reaching the mark at age 24 years. Three months and 17 days with his game-winning goal against El Paso Locomotive. The 2020 USL USL Championship Young Player of the Year beats the mark previously held by Junior Flemings, who was 24-8 and 3. Cameron Lancaster has the best strike rate, no real surprise, among the 50 goal scorers in USL Championship regular season. One goal every just under 114 minutes, and he's a clear 13, 14 minutes ahead of his competition, Cal Jennings, who is in at 127.7, 91 appearances and 51 goals. Alex Tambaka set a single-game career best, nine saves in that 1-1 draw that we previously played for you in the matchup against Rhode Island, continued his uh, race to the record books, most regular season saves in USL Championship history, surpassing his eight-save outing for the battery against Richmond back in 2016. Second in championship history in both saves and shutouts to Evan Newton. Right now, Tambakis has 548 saves, 45 shutouts. Evan Newton, 573 saves and 58 shutouts. So, safe to say that that one record, the saves record, should fall within the next six weeks or so if uh, Tambakis stays between the sticks for New Mexico United. The shutouts mark might take another couple of seasons, and there's a lot of space between uh, Tambakis and And the next in line who is active, Brandon Miller, is third with 414. Matt Van Okel, 401. So 147 saves between Alex Tambakis, now second all-time, and with uh, Matt Van Okel, who is fourth all-time. It's Evan Newton, Alex Tambakis, Brandon Miller, Matt Van Okel, and Carl Wyshynski with 393. USL Championship and League One players were selected for international team duty. For uh, the CONCACAF Nations League Finals, El Paso Locomotive's Jamali Waite, Hartford Athletics' Romario Williams would be representing Jamaica, squaring off against the United States. Also, you have uh, Indy 11's Douglas Martinez representing Honduras. In the Copa America qualifying, the final knockout stage is there. Roots' Neville Hackshaw, San Antonio's Shannon Gomez, Hailstorm's Noah Powder, and Real Gill, part of Trinidad and Tobago's squad to face Canada in the other playoff match set for Saturday in Frisco, Texas. Joshua Ramos has been named to the U.S. Virgin Islands squad, playing a home-and-home against British Virgin Islands in the opening round of CONCACAF qualification for the World Cup to be held in the U.S., Mexico, and Canada. Call-ups for March 
for Burundi, Donaciano from Oakland, Neon Gabire from the Rowdies, Raiko Rosarena for Cuba, Ricky Alba for Vegas Lights, El Salvador, Tamakis for the Roots, Jairo Enriquez for Switchback, Samando Moreno for El Paso, Nelson Flores for North Carolina FC, Jeremy Garay for Locomotive, Kenny Basaw, Bora Nagara from San Antonio FC, Douglas Martinez for Indy 11 and Honduras. We mentioned uh, Jamali Waite and Romario Williams. Jackson Curry for Lebanon from South Georgia Tormenta in League One. Same for uh, the Maltese national side and Yannick Yankum from Lexington SC. Callum Stretch for Puerto Rico for Tormenta. Also, it is uh, Nshuti Innocent for One Knox for Rwanda. Hassan Gabo for the Greenville Triumph for Somalia. Trinidad and Tobago. Hackshaw, Gill, Powder, and Gomez, as we mentioned. And then Joshua Ramos for South Georgia Tormenta. Philip Goodrum has scored in four straight matches, uh, four straight regular season appearances after his game-winning goal against Vegas Lights on Saturday evening, matching an individual best in USL Championship. Canardo Forbes moved into a tie with Josh Stugg, second place in regular season appearances in USL Championship with 264 on the loss to Orange County, third place in the league's regular season minutes list, 291 minutes behind current leader Hugo Robert, uh, Hugh Roberts. Roots uh, Ilya Alexiev, the youngest player to record a goal for Roots since joining USL Championship, 18 years, 164 days old. 12th straight inaugural game with Rhode Island's draw with New Mexico United that the newcomer to the league was unable to take a victory. Last two to win their inaugural contests, Vegas Lights, Atlanta United 2 back in 2018. Monterey Bay has won their first three home openers uh, in club history at Cardinal after defeating Phoenix Rising. Monterey Bay's first win against Rising in club history, and Sacramento head coach Mark Briggs recorded his 50th regular season win at the club with the 1-0 win over the Miami FC, the 19th coach to reach half a century regular season wins with a single club in the USL Championship era, current record held by Mike Anhauser with 130. All right, so let's take a peek at uh, what is coming up on the schedule this weekend and get your juice boxes where we can when it comes to uh, all of the activity in USL Championship. Saturday, and it's a lot of action on Saturday, one match on Sunday. Saturday, 2 o'clock at Trinity Health, Hartford Athletic hosting Birmingham Legion, 4 o'clock at Keyworth, Detroit City hosting Loud United, and at Lynn Family, Lou City hosting the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. That's going to be an early contender for match of the week. 7 o'clock at the Mike, Indy 11 hosting Sacramento Republic, 7 o'clock at Wake Med, North Carolina FC, and the Tampa Bay Rowdies. 7.30 at Patriots Point, Charleston Battery and New Mexico United as New Mexico United continues their run in the Eastern time zone in the early matches so far this season. 8 o'clock at Cashman, it is Vegas Lights and El Paso Locomotive. 8.30 at Toyota, San Antonio and Colorado Springs. 10 o'clock in Irvine, Orange County, SC and the Miami FC. 10 o'clock at the corner of 38th and Washington, Phoenix Rising and Oakland Roots. Sunday, Rhode Island goes from one end of the world to the other and takes on Monterey Bay at Cardinal. That one is a 6 o'clock start in USL Championship. Also on the board in USL Championship, you have uh, Hayden Stamp signing to a USL Academy contract for Lou City. LaRouge acquired Victor Bezerra on loan for Chicago Fire. San Antonio FC has announced the transfer of Santiago Patino to Ho Chi Minh City. And that's, uh, that's about as random as it gets when it comes to uh, all of your activity and where you want to be transferred to. USL Championship Save of the Week for week number two. Your contenders, Antonio Carrera for North Carolina FC, Hugo Ferro for Loudon, Alex Tembacus to Mexico United, Nate Steinwasher for Detroit City. You can go to uh, uslchampionship.com, click on the banner in the news section, and you have until 12 o'clock Friday. When the winner gets announced later that afternoon, Carrera, Ferro, Tambacus, and Steinwasher for your save of the week for week number two. Championship power rankings week number two. It is uh, Loud United, Monterey Bay, Oakland Roots. That is uh, some of the folks to uh, pay attention to. Sacramento Republic stays at number one. Loose City up one to two. Tampa Bay down one to three with the 2-2 draw. Then uh, Charleston stays at four. Birmingham stays at five. San Antonio and Hartford stay at six and seven. Then the moving. Orange County up two to eight. New Mexico United down one to nine. Indy 11 up one to ten. Oakland, Monterey Bay, the biggest mover, up 12 to 12. FC Tulsa up four to 13. Loudon up seven to 14. Detroit City up seven to 15. 
Phoenix rising down 7-16. to 16. Rhode Island up 2-17. to 17. North Carolina with the loss down 6-18. to 18. Same for Memphis, 9-01 to 19. Switchbacks down 4-20. to 20. Riverhounds down 3-21. to 21. El Paso with two losses in their first three matches, one point. An improvement from last season, but still power rankings at the website. Down 7-22, to 22, the Miami FC down 3-23. to 23. Vegas stays at 24, goes down to 24, staying at the bottom of the table as they have in the past. So also when uh, you're looking at goal of the week and you have uh, your contenders there as well, Kali Almedkar for Loudon, A.B. Sissoko for Memphis, Philip Goodrum for Tulsa, Matt Mahoney for switchbacks, and you have the winner coming up in in, uh, short order. Once again, keep an eye out for that particular competition. That particular competition ends on Thursdays at uslchampionship.com where you can vote for the goal of the week. Team of the week for week number two. uh, Monterey Bay's midfielder Rafael Baca voted player of the week after the win over Phoenix Rising. Team of the week, in goal, Colin Shetler for Orange County. Matt Mahoney at the back for Colorado Springs, along with Aiden Stanley and Sean Tosh from Loose City in a back three. Blaine Ferry from Tulsa, Baca, Jack Blake, El Medcar, and Clay Holstad from Rhode Island in your midfield five. Up top, Zach Ryan and Philip Goodrum. Your coach of the week is Frank Yallop for Monterey Bay. Bench, Anthony Siaha, Monterey Bay, Ryan Dogman from OC, Jack Gurr from Sacramento, Memo Diaz from Oakland, Aaron Malloy from Charleston, and the Pacific Nyongabire from Tampa, along with Milo Yosef from Tulsa. Juice boxes before we let you go and get you ready for everything going on in uh, USL Championship for week match week number three. And if there aren't any juice boxes, we'll let you know. But uh, juice boxes traditionally in USL Championship will run through the favorites here for uh, Saturday and Sunday. Hartford on the plus side at a plus 141 over Birmingham, who's a plus 159. Detroit on the minus side at a minus 110, hosting Loudoun. Loose City at a plus 140, hosting Pittsburgh at a plus 172. Sacramento road favorite at Indy at a plus 129. Same for Tampa, road favorite in Cary against North Carolina FC. Charleston a minus 132, hosting New Mexico United. El Paso at a plus one and a quarter at Cashman, taking on Vegas Lights. San Antonio, a minus 108, hosting Colorado Springs at a plus 240. Orange County, minus 159, hosting the Miami FC, who's north of plus 400. Phoenix Rising, a minus 108, hosting Roots at a plus 250. And Monterey Bay at Cardinal, favored at home at a minus 104. Rhode Island is a plus 250. That's your quick rundown of everything going on in the USL Championship. If you would, please, if you are in market, follow along on and uh, you can see the matches in person, go see the match in person. You get to see the uh, next wave of talent coming through in the United States through the USL Championship. If you are in market, can't make it, follow along on local providers. If you're out of market and can't make it and want to follow along with what's going on in the league, all of the different uh, entities where you can watch games, listen to games, please do so and continue to boost all the talent in the USL Championship. For everybody here, At SDH, I'm just John. Play it safe, everybody. Enjoy your time with the USL Championship. We'll catch up with you next week.